Welcome to the Prescription for Living in Houston podcast, where we go over exactly what it's like to work, eat, sleep, and play right here in Houston. So good morning. We are here with Dr. Rebecca Behrens. Uh, very nice to meet you. And we're going to be talking all about Sugarland and new territory specifically. So uh, with that, uh, would you like to introduce yourself a little bit? Yeah, sure. Thanks so much for having me. Um, so I'm Rebecca Behrens. I'm a family physician in private practice, and um, my practice is actually in the Heights, but I live in New Territory, which is one of the neighborhoods in Sugarland. Fantastic. So what would you say the best thing about living in uh, New Territory or Sugarland in general is? Yeah, so it's funny. I, I grew up in Richmond, and um, I always said I was never going to move back to the Sugarland Richmond area, and then, you know, life happens. Um, I think one of the th main things that drew me back there, one is my mom still lives close by, so that's a huge win when you have kids and having family support nearby. Um, but also just, like, all of the opportunities and, and things that are available for kids in that area, um, it's, it's really amazing. Like, there's, I really don't think there's any other part of Houston that has quite the level of opportunity for kids and you're also still so close to downtown that you can still access all of the downtown amenities as well yeah. um but you're not living in like super urban you know tiny <laughs> tiny houses in the yep. downtown area you're kind of getting the best of both worlds excellent how many kids do you have um i have two and a third one on the way <laughs> oh congratulations <laughs> all righty and then how old are they um my son is almost five my daughter's almost three and then this one will be due at um, early 2024. All right, you got them you spaced out <laughs> just, just right then, huh? <laughs> yeah, I, I agree on the sugar. I mean, we're obviously just kind of right around the corner. We're over in Siena, so um, not too short. I drive by new territory when I take my daughter for um, <clears throat> extra softball lessons. So um, we've spent a lot of time in Sugarland. It's fantastic. Um, so you kind of hit on it. Um, what were you considering other areas to move to? You said you, you would never, you know, kind of promise yourself you would never move back. Um, so why, why did you move to Sugarland versus maybe some of those other areas? Yeah, so um, my husband and I actually both left Houston for our residency training and we moved back when I was pregnant with my first child. And when we, we had been living in Philadelphia um, right. up until then and we loved it. We were, you know, super near downtown. We walked everywhere. I biked to work. We were in a townhouse. You know, we had all the city like right at our doorstep and we loved it. And so when we moved back, um, we were kind of hoping to have a similar lifestyle here yep. Um, yep. and had this illusion that that was possible. <laughs> um, and so um, we actually moved to the Washington Corridor area initially and we were in a townhouse and we, we were it was as walkable as Houston gets. Um, yep. And, yep. Um, and you know, we loved it and, and we had a great time there. Um, but ultimately, you know, we kind of knew that was not going to be where we stayed forever with kids, just because that neighborhood, there were no sidewalks. It would not be safe for your kid to like go out and meet up with friends in the neighborhood in that area. Like there's so, for, for many reasons, you know, traffic, no sidewalks, you know, Washington bars, like just a lot of, a lot of parts of that were not going to be safe for kids. So it was sort of like our living out the last of our young adulthood <laughs> um, and enjoying <laughs> enjoying that yep. um and so you know we we love that area for the time we were there but it was just not ultimately what we knew was going to be our long-term plan um but we hadn't really decided where we wanted to end up after that we kind of wanted to see what happened you know both with both of our careers and and i actually i was employed at the time and working nearby and ended up shifting into private practice and moving to more part-time schedules. A lot of things about our lives changed um, and our purchasing power also changed, <laughs> which made a difference too. Um, and so, you know, we didn't really know where we were gonna end up, but I think we had two kids, we knew we wanted a third, and that was kind of our impetus to say like, okay, we need to kind of decide where we're gonna end up. Um, and in our discussions about that, it, we sort of settled on Sugarland at that point. So you, you, had the, you had the kids while you were in the Washington Corridor? Yes, yes. Our first two were both born while we were living in the Washington Corridor area. Gotcha. And then, so was that like a two or three story then? It was a two story. We found one of the rare two stories. Um, and it did actually have a small yard, which was great for yeah. when the kids were really little. Um, definitely would not have been sufficient for older kids at all. But, um, you know, it, it was a great place for babies and for growing up. And there's actually a lot of young families in, you know, the Washington Corridor and the Heights area. There's a lot of people having their first, maybe second child, lots of new moms in that area. 
um, a lot of resources for new moms in that area. But I do find that a lot of people by kid three <laughs> are usually moving out of there um, yeah. just because of, you know, finances and logistics. It just becomes less and less uh, sustainable. <laughs> yeah. No, um, we we lived together, my wife and I, when we were in, we were in Braisewood area. So she had a three story and very, very close to the Texas Medical Center, right? So that was a super easy commute for her. And, and she was like, it'll be fine. We got plenty of room and it was plenty of room, right? But it was a three story. And then I just think after the, you know, after the kids get mobile and you see them kind of navigating the stairs and then you want them to be outside more, it's, it's just, it is kind of one of those transitions where you're like, yeah, we gotta, we got to go out to the suburbs. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of people that, you know, I, I, I talked to a, another lady that was in the Heights and, um, and she loves it. Right. And, and that's, it, it's perfect for her. And, and, but it is, I think more often than not, I think we, we tend to kind of move out and try to get the bigger spaces. Yeah. Um, and there's definitely part of the Heights that you can still do that. You can still have a decent yard and decent sized house and have, you know, more mobility, but not on two PCP salaries, <laughs> especially not when one of you is part time. <laughs> <laughs> no, very true, right? And, and then so, well, let's hit on that commute because so you're in the Heights. Is your is your husband also in the Heights? Are you in the same practice or? No, he's in the med center, and and okay. that was another reason that we kind of settled on Sugarland too. Was he's in the med center, and he's always going to be in the med center. His job is always going to be there. It's not going to be something where he's going to shift to a different location. Whereas because I have a private practice, mine is sort of flexible you know sure. I have a lease in my current space in the Heights um, but it's I can move it if I need to you know I can I can move my practice I can shift things around it's right. uh, it's not a big deal for me to make adjustments so we really focused on the commute to the med center first when we were making a decision about where we were gonna look um, yeah. because we knew that that was not changeable and figured I would make do with whatever we need to do going to the Heights and see how it was and then decide if I needed to make changes and approximately, what is your commute like to the Heights? Um, so it depends on how many wrecks there are on 610 that day. <laughs> <laughs> There's usually at least one. Um, really, it's it's the 610 portion of the commute that's the worst. You know, coming up 59 is a breeze until you hit 610, and then it's really a crapshoot. Like, I've had a day where it took me an hour and a half to get to work. Um, but the majority of days, I would say, are between... 35 to 45 minutes okay. um, but if there's more than one wreck which is not a super uncommon occurrence right, it right. could be more than that and you know usually though I estimate I mean it's gonna take me about 45 minutes and for your husband how long is that commute to the med center um you know I think his commute there is about 35 to 40 minutes um, maybe a little longer. Again, he actually takes 90 the majority of the way towards the med okay, center, so he skips yep. a lot of the a lot of the traffic there. Um, and then coming home, I think he's about the same, about 35 to 45 minutes. Um, interestingly, when we lived in Washington Corridor, his commute there was was fairly quick. He would usually leave for work around 7:30 and make sure. it there by 8 a.m. on time. But coming home, it's actually not that different of a commute. He ends up getting home around the same time as he got home when. We yeah. lived in the Washington corridor. Yeah, that was the same exact conversation we had um, when we were thinking about different places to move. Um, and because the heights, again, by distance wise, is much closer than than we are. But again, with traffic and everything going on, kind of in the inner city, it could take you just as much time. So it just depends on: do you want to be kind of moving, you know, and, and, and not have as much stop and go, <laughs> or do you want to, you know, have that kind of quote, shorter shorter distance? Um, so, not, yeah, so the good thing about the med center, at least where you are, right, you've got probably three options depending. So you've got 59, you've got um, 90, or you, you can kind of drift over to the, to the tollway. Um, does he ever take the tollway? I was talking to somebody and sometimes they take the tollway, uh, Fort Bend tollway. Um, he, I don't think he's, maybe once he's taken it. I think the majority of the time he really takes either 90 or 59 and he just kind of checks ways before he leaves to see what's going to be the best. But I think there was maybe one day that there was some massive wreck or something that yeah. he did end up having to take the tollway. Um, but the, the Fort Bend tollway is a little far of south of us. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that was another thing that we loved about our neighborhood in particular is like you said, we can get, I'm on 59 in less than two minutes from our house, same with 90 pretty much, you know, like we can get onto both of those really quickly. Yeah. Um, and so 
even just the location within new territory that we're in, we're like perfectly located to just be able to zip around. We're not having to go through a whole lot of the neighborhood to get there. Um, so it makes it really fast for us to get access to the highways. Yeah, super convenient for that. It's always nice to have options because, again, like you said, you mentioned, um, you know, sometimes there are accidents. Um, you know, more times than not, there's probably, <laughs> yeah. you know, at least one someplace. Yeah. Um, so let's let's shift back to um, kind of the new territory area. Um, well, first, let's hit on entertainment. You said there's a ton to do for kids. So let's talk about, you know, what there is entertainment wise. Yeah, so um, as, since we moved out to the Sugarland area, um, we've been able to get both of the kids into swimming lessons, which is something that was really important to us and something we attempted to do in the Heights area, but those classes fill up so fast because it's such a dense population of kids in that area. Um, it's actually really hard to get into a swim class that works for your schedule when you work during the week. Um, and so, but we got out there I just literally, there was like four swim schools within a five mile radius of our house. Yeah. And I picked one that had the perfect times for us and we got them right in. It was no wait, it was really easy. Um, they're both in a great Montessori school that we love, um, which is significantly cheaper than the schools were in the, in the Heights area. Um, and so that's been great for them. Um, and then we actually live super close to the um, Natural Science Museum Sugarland location. Um, and we have a membership there, so we like to take them there. There's also a Children's Museum Sugarland location that we like to go to. Um, and again, you like you can get those benefits of the the downtown museums too if you want to take a drive all the way out there that day. But if you just want to do a quick museum trip, like it's right around the corner. Yeah. Um, the other thing that's really great is all of the different neighborhood splash pads that are available. So this summer, especially, we've been taking advantage of that. You know, most of the subdivisions will have their own. Um, like subdivision, splash pad, pool area. And sometimes you have to go with a resident of the subdivision, but some of them are accessible to people outside of that as well. Um, and we have friends who live in different subdivisions in, in um, Sugarland, so we can kind of like use each other's uh, splash pads. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's really great. Um, and I think as the kids get older, just all the cat camps that are available in the summer uh, that again, don't get filled up quite the same as the ones downtown do. Um, yeah. It's just so much easier to access the activities. It's not that there aren't activities in the Heights area, but it's like you better be ready the second sign up opens and, and like ready to sign up or you're not going to get a spot. But in Sugarland, it's like you just sign up whatever you feel like and you're going to get a spot. It's no big deal. Yeah, I, I want to go back to the swimming because I, I think for people that are kind of back east, it's, um, you know, swimming is kind of a life skill here in Texas, right? In Houston, because there's just so many swimming pools. And I know as soon as we could get our kids into swimming school, we were getting them into swimming school just because, you know, there's just so much going on. And um, I don't know about yours, but did your oh, part of our graduation from swim school was they threw our kids in the pool with all their clothes on and their shoes on? Did you have to go through that? <laughs> um, ours, so ours does not do traditional like ISR type of lessons because I honestly don't think that my son is in particular would tolerate that. Um, so, and we have not gotten there yet. Um, they're doing a very slow, gradual kind of introduction to swimming for the kids, which I think is better for their personalities. Um, and you know, it's it helps gradually build some confidence in the water without having too much fear, but but enough fear to know like I can't just go in the water by myself. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, and to your point, like my mom has a pool in her backyard. Everyone has a pool in their backyard. Yeah. We specifically bought a house without a pool because we didn't want to deal with that safety issue in our own house. But I mean, you know what's going to happen, so you do. You have, we want to get your kids in swimming as soon as you can down here. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. And I, back to your point about choices, right? It's nice to have those four different choices because, again, every school is going to have a little different perspective and and um, you know set of traditions, whatever. So, you know, to be able to have those choices because you want to get them in swim school or you want to get them in gymnastics or right or whatever the activity is, there are so many different choices a lot of times that you can sort of pick the school that's right for you. Um, how about restaurants? What would you say your, your favorite go-to restaurants are? So restaurants, we're definitely not as spoiled as we were when we were right near the Heights. <laughs> um, the, Heights the Heights restaurant scene, I don't think you can beat in Houston, no. but there is an amazing selection of different types of cuisine in Sugarland. Like there's like Chinese food, Indian food, um, you know, more like 
some of the like foodie new american heightsy kind of food um sushi like anything that you can want is there it's just not maybe as like fancy as it is in the heights right. um but there's still a couple of restaurants that we that we really like to go to that have more of that like foodie kind of kind of heights feel one that we really like is called fino and vinyl and they do like more tapas style food and they have you know wine and cocktails and stuff like that um, and it's in the town center area of sugarland which is just kind of nice to walk around yeah. um and so that's one of the places we like to go to um we really like mala Sichuan as well um uh, it's great chinese food um and then in our immediate area around new territory um there's quite a few options that we often do for takeout like thai square um, in new territories is like very unassuming tiny little thai place but we get takeout from them all the time and it's some of the best Thai food I've had ever, <laughs> to be honest. It's really, really good. Um, and you would never even, you can't even really see it from the highway. You would never even necessarily know it's there, but it's like one of our favorite places to get takeout from. Oh, that's fantastic. So are your kids, do they like to experiment or, um, cause I mean, you got some, you got some, the, the Chinese and the Thai, do they go into that stuff? Or? Um, so we do not typically take them out with us to eat. <laughs> Those are more okay. date night kind of things. Oh, good, okay. um, but um, we do, I mean, like I said, we do get Thai takeout quite a bit and they'll, they'll experiment to a degree. Gotcha. Um, my daughter's a little bit more adventurous my, or, than my son, but you know, we always will put like a little bit of what we're having on the plate. Um, and it does help to be able to easily do takeout and bring it home because then there's not the stress of yeah. being in the restaurant and having a time crunch of trying to get them to eat something they can kind of try things at their own leisure one place we do take them though i should mention is um this is like a common friday night ritual for us we take them to pacific coast taco because ah. they have a big outdoor patio that overlooks the i think it's a bayou or a creek i don't know what it is maybe it's yeah. a creek um and um it's really great for them on a friday because we can i pick them up from school i meet my husband there he meets us there on his way home from work they love the food there because it's tacos and quesadillas and all that kind of stuff. And then yep. they can run around on the patio and we can sit and actually like relax a little bit. And it's a really nice patio. It has fans. So even in the summer, it's not terrible. Yep. Um, and then when the weather's nicer, it's great to sit out there. Um, and yeah, it's they got, they got a bar. They yes, got a bar. They do have a bar. You know, yeah. You got to mention the bar because yeah. that is, it's a, yeah. they got they, a bunch it, of good drinks. Yeah. Yeah, they do. When, when I'm not pregnant, I will get a margarita, but oh. um, <laughs> yeah. I guess I'm forgetting yeah. about that now because I don't, haven't been able to indulge in a little while. <laughs> we were just there. Um, my, my daughter had a softball tournament and it, they, they won and they had to play a late game. And so we all ran over there um, as a team. And so, you know, it was easy to get in, just like you're saying, and, and a lot of the kids. Um, most of the girls were exhausted by that time. They had been playing all day, but um, I had my son with me, so he got to go out on the patio, and a lot of the other kind of siblings were able to kind of go play. Um, and yeah, I was quite surprised. They had a really nice bar in there, so I think that's a great choice. And then also, um, somebody else talked about Vino and Vinyl, and my wife and I have been there one time as well, and that place is fantastic. That mm -hmm. I, I'm so glad you brought that up, because I always forget about that place. I've been there, I, guess I think we only went once. Um, but it's got a great vibe, like you were saying. It's got really good food, um, good wine choices. So, yeah, those are those are great choices. Um, hit on commute. How about so you talked about schools a little bit, right? They're not the you're in Montessori, and the fifth the five year old he's about ready to go into for, or kindergarten, I guess. Yeah, right. he's so he's a young five. He turns five like right at the cutoff. Um, okay. So we're gonna keep him in Montessori at least for another year, just because I think he's gonna be t a little too young maturity-wise for um, yeah. public school kindergarten. But yeah, I mean the Fort Bend um, ISD schools are like, I think probably the best. I mean, I'm biased. I went there, <laughs> but I think they're probably the best public schools in the Houston area. Um, yeah. And uh, we're actually zoned to the high school that I went to. Um, and um, yeah, they're just great schools. Um, very, very. Um, involved parents like that we are neighborhood you know facebook group there's also a neighborhood group for the parents at the elementary school and at the middle school and at the high school and there's a lot there's just like a lot of community involvement in the schools there um so yeah there's definitely a lot of that but then there's also a lot of private school options in sugarland too um for people who want that there's um you know my husband grew up going to catholic school so we haven't really decided yet fully what we're doing but there's great catholic schools in sugarland um, and then there's also a pretty large homeschooling community in Sugarland as well. So oh, interesting. kind of depending on what you're interested in, you can still find it in Sugarland. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, I think everyone has their own uh, personal 
beliefs and preferences about how they want to do school. But I think sure. in Sugarland, you can pick any of them and you're not going to have trouble. It's not like you're forced into private because the public schools are terrible or, or anything like that. You can really choose what's right for your family. I, I think that's a great point on the, the homeschool, right? Because obviously that became a lot more prevalent over the last couple of years. Um, and I think obviously the drawback on that is people will talk about, well, you don't get the social aspects. Mm -hmm. But with all the other things that you've been talking about, there's so many opportunities for kids to be social and get out, whether they're in the neighborhood or all through these different, you know, whether they're sports programs or swimming, um, gymnastics and so on. There's a lot of ways for kids to still get that, that social aspect and still, you know, be homeschooled, right? So that yeah. gives parents a lot of flexibility these days. Um, though I can't imagine, I mean, I, the working from home sort of helps with that too, but I know when my kids are home during the summer, um, the the amount of work that I get done during the summer, I always have <laughs> these big goals and uh, they just never quite to work out that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's the whole, the whole, the homeschooling thing, something I've like been looking into, you know, as I'm like deciding about what we're going to do for our kids. And there's, it's definitely a, there's a lot of supports you have to have in place to make it work. Um, but yeah, I mean, in Sugarland, there's quite a few um, actually different groups of people that like meet on a regular basis or do like a co-op thing where you like all the kids will go to like one person's house or a, or a class oh. or something like that. So you, you have a break <laughs> of some time that you can kind of do your own thing, like whether it's work or personal stuff sure. while your kids are away. So there's a, there's a lot of options there as well. Well, that's neat. I, I think that's, and I, I mean, obviously everybody's you know, better at something, especially when the kids get older, right? I mean, the math gets much harder. Um, you know, all these things get a lot more technical. So to be able to, I know my, my wife could cover all the chemistry and all the biology, all the sciences she'd have down, but she's not a big fan of that advanced math. Um, you know, so, and even sometimes, I mean, I, I went pretty, pretty far with math. But you're looking at some of this stuff and it's like, man, you got to like refresh your memory and it's like going back through all these formulas and you're like, oh my Lord. So no, I, that's, that's another really, really good point. Um, there are just a lot more options where you don't have to kind of know it all or do it all. And then just simply put, just being able to, you know, if you've got, again, three kids or, or, you know, whatever it is to be able to handle all the different, uh, drama that happens through the course of a day with with uh, young kids or even older kids is uh it's, it, sometimes it requires a saintly dis disposition <laughs> um, yeah. so you've been in the area a long time so let's talk about kind of the growth the um from from what you've seen just maybe since you were originally in richmond obviously that's a massive thing. <laughs> yeah. so maybe hit on that first just the, the amount of growth that you've seen over that course of time yeah, so I mean, this area of Houston is just absolutely exploding, and it has been for a while. Um, you know, when I first left, you know, I went I went to Rice, so I was nearby, but I wasn't coming out to home very often because it was so close. My mom would just come meet me up there, and so I remember this was in 2006. I graduated high school. I went to Rice. I remember coming home. I think it was like at Christmas or something. One one year and driving and I was like, where am I? <laughs> like, roads that never existed were there. There was like entire neighborhoods that never existed, just appeared overnight. Um, and that seems like that's constantly happening out there. <laughs> like there's just constantly new things being built and expanded. And um, I mean, like Sienna didn't exist at all no. um, yeah. at then. And so um, even now, sometimes we'll be driving and I'm like, I came here thousands of times between middle and high school, like around the mall and I'm driving, I'm like, where am I? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it just, it's, it keeps changing and growing and, um, it's, it's kind of crazy to see the place that you spent so much of your childhood and all of a sudden you don't recognize it anymore. Yeah. How about prices over the last few years since you've, you've moved down here? Um, what kind of growth have you seen there? Yeah, so that was funny. That was actually one of the reasons that we moved when we did. We were planning to move a year later. We thought we'd be five years in that house, but we ended up moving a year earlier, partially because the interest rates were rising and we were like, hmm, let's handle that before <laughs> before that becomes an issue. Um, and then obviously the prices were going up throughout the pandemic as well, um, just because of all the demand. 
Um, and so those prices have definitely gone up. I was just reading in our little like neighborhood newspaper. I think the prices have gone up up to 60% since two, 2020 in some areas. And our neighborhood's actually one of the largest increases in the Sugarland area. Yeah. Um, so the prices have definitely gone up. Um, but, you know, comparable to other parts of Houston, it, it's still a lot more affordable than living in, say, like, the Bel Air or Heights or um, Oak Forest, Garden Oaks, like for what you get for your money, it's vastly different. Um, the prices are just so much better out there. Yeah, um, no, for, for sure. And then, like you said, you just have to deal with the commute. But, you know, I think that's people's first reaction, right? We have to deal with the commute. But as you were talking about, it really depends on when you go um, and, you know, where you're, where you're commuting to because uh, it could be just as long in, in some cases. So, mm -hmm. and I think there's, it has a lot to offer. Um, I think it has a lot to offer. What would you say to people that are familiar with Houston in general? Um, you, obviously you lived in, in Philadelphia, right? And that was fantastic. And what would you say to people maybe kind of relocating to Houston um, that maybe would surprise them? Yeah, so I think it's funny when I, 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 moved, I went to D.C. for residency and then my husband's in Philly. I moved up to Philly. People up there really think Texas is like a very rural, backwards place with like no anything. Um, the food in Houston is vastly superior to D.C., like vastly superior. And it's so funny because D.C. I think is very proud of their food. And I'm like, this food sucks. <laughs> <laughs> um, it really is so much better down here. Philly, I will say, holds its own. Philly has very good food too, so I would say they're they're comparable. But obviously, in Houston, um, I think because of the the sprawl of the city and then all the diversity that we have here of people from all over the world, like we just have so much more different types of food in different areas. Like you know, you can go to parts of Houston where you know you're going to find amazing Chinese food, amazing Indian food, um, amazing Ethiopian food, like just amazing Mexican food, like all over. There's all different cuisine, and you don't really get that up there just because there's not the same diversity, um, right. and there's not the same diversity in one area. Um, and I think that's what's really different about, about Houston and, and Sugarland in particular. You know, Fort Bend's like one of the most diverse counties in the country. Um, if not and the we first, really, yeah. Yeah, I think it. I think it is actually number one, and yeah. um, you know, it's that gives us so much access to so many different things and people and you know cultural experiences and food and it just it's amazing and you really don't get that up there because it's just not the same level of diversity yeah totally agree i, I think that really is a common uh common theme I, i've talked to several people who have uh, traveled and worked and lived other places and i think that is one of the things that they always try to bring up is is the amount of diversity we have here and just the the misconception of of you know a lot of people think texas and and you know whatever whatever comes with that but it's <laughs> it's not true right and, yeah and, and you can find places and others definitely places in texas that are like that right there's you know the, some some stereotypes have a have a reason for them <laughs> um but but not houston um, yeah houston's so. like its own little oasis um, in it Texas, is. it's it's so different than all the other large cities in Texas too. Like I think it's the diversity here is just there's nowhere else like it. That's right. Yeah, I mean Houston and Dallas, those are different planets, right? I mean it's very very different. It's you know kind of this uh, Texas umbrella. Uh, Austin is very different. San Antonio is very different. So you got that kind of triangle. And so if you're moving to Texas just in general, you really have within that triangle, there's so much employment there's, and there's so many different cultures and, and attitudes. So it, nothing, nothing like kind of those normal stereotypes. And I think, I mean, people that are in California, they can identify because again, California, you got three different planets with that too, right? Yeah. San Francisco is different than LA, it's different than Orange County, it's different than San Diego, it's different than inland if you spend any time in California. I mean, you know, kind of you come off the beach in, the, in kind of the San Diego area, you go 10 miles inland, um, you might as well be in Phoenix um, yeah. <laughs> you know, from just the temperature perspective and just the, everything's different. So thank you for joining us on the Prescription for Living in Houston podcast. 
We've had a wonderful time discussing what it's like to work, eat, sleep, and play right here in the heart of Texas. If you're considering a move to Houston or within Houston, we're here to guide and assist you. Don't hesitate to reach out with a call or an email at dan at dhsrealtygroup.com. And remember, the charm of Houston lies in its diverse neighborhoods. So make sure to tune in next week where we'll be exploring another vibrant neighborhood in Houston, offering insights into its unique lifestyle and opportunities. Until then, stay safe and keep envisioning your perfect Houston living experience. Goodbye for now, and we'll catch you in